I think you started Ultralytics for similar motivations to why we started Roboflow, which is the writing is, is there for making these technologies accessible and usable for any variety of industries. Being able to train a custom mm -hmm. detector that works successfully to find airplane parts, to sushi detection, to solving board games, there's an infinite number of things that we could detect and understand. It's a question of making sure that's accessible to, to everyday people. And so now with that, with that context, I think that that's a phenomenal segue into, this is why you've put out YOLO v5. And so I do want to mention, so that in YOLO v4, you're credited with a, a notable acknowledgement because you introduced mosaic augmentation, which again is an augmentation technique that takes advantage of almost like copying and pasting portions of image on top of each other. It's almost like a cut mix, mm -hmm. but for object detection is maybe a fair way of, mm -hmm. of describing it. And so I, I would love to hear, I mean, so the motivations for YOLO v are accessibility, ease of training, high quality performance, quick inference mm -hmm. speeds. I'd love to hear a bit about what you think YOLO v5 does for accessibility that you think other models in the YOLO family might not yet do. And then a bit mm -hmm. about what's different and what's new. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So on the accessibility front, let's see. So I can give you a, a nice example of that. So one of the issues that I saw, so in my YOLO V3 repo, I just started working on it by myself, but, but more and more people started noticing it and they started raising their issues when they tried to train their custom data sets with it. And I noticed that a lot of these custom data sets have um, objects which are not quite under the same, I guess, distribution of aspect ratios that you see in the Cocoa data set, which is what the models are typically trained on. So I realized that a lot of people were training models with anchors, they're called, that were designed for a different data set. So I started working on code to automatically allow you to fit new anchors to your data. And I worked on this for a while and I introduced this using a k-means method, which was the, the standard method at the time. And then I followed it up with a second stage, which was an evolutionary algorithm, a genetic algorithm, which would take the result of the k-means anchors I use those as initial starting point and then evolve your anchors through up to several thousand generations on the actual cost function that the model is going to be trained on. So rather than, than use the k-means function, which has, I guess, like a limited subset of cost functions, this would allow you to actually evolve the anchors using the same types of losses that were going to be seen in training. So I thought this would work better. And it did work better to a certain extent. But it actually wasn't enough because this manual step was a bit complicated. People had to take the results, paste them into their model configuration files. Sometimes the order would get a little screwy. So there was a lot of places to break this method that I developed. So in YOLO v5, uh, I actually took this a step further in something I call auto anchor. And what this does is when you load up your custom data set and you start training without having to do anything, the code will look at your anchors and it'll compare them against your data. And if they don't fit well, there's a determination that they fall below a certain matching threshold, then it will just start training new anchors automatically using the same method. It'll get some k-means and initial guesses, and then it'll evolve new anchors using a genetic algorithm. And then it'll turn around and automatically place these new anchors back into your model and train the model and save the model with these new anchors. So there's not a single thing you need to do. So if somebody shows up and they have one of these special data sets where they're fitting like long rectangles or vertical re rectangles, then hopefully the new repository will handle that a lot better, much more automatically and much more seamlessly uh, than anything in the past that I've seen really. So this is just an example of like one of the small steps I've taken in many different aspects to try and increase the robustness and I guess the out of the box results, you can say, from someone coming in and using this for the first time. That's fantastic. That, and I mean, makes so much sense. I remember YOLO v3 struggling. And actually, I, I did hey means to determine where my anchor should be, not even thinking about the, or even noticing the genetic technique that you'd published for making that be even more robust. Mm -hmm.